Well, hi, I'm Joanna with The Smallscape, and today I thought it would be fun to do a video on aquatic plants and specifically the two most popular and easiest user-friendly beginner plants that you could find. Well, these two plants are my favorite aquatic plants and there's reasons for that. Many, many reasons. And they're both really great plants, but they're also quite different and they have their pros and cons. They could be very useful and great for one tank, but not so good for others. So let's, let's break it down. The two different plants that I will be talking about are Anubius and the Cryptocorn, otherwise known as the Crypt. So I'd be very curious if you like these plants, if you've ever dealt with them, what your opinions are, or if you've never had any aquatic plants whatsoever. But don't be afraid, if you have not yet tried them, this video is for you. All right, so three different categories that I thought might be helpful for you to understand the two most popular aquatic plants. Now, the first one, Anubius, it's one of my favorites. It has been for a very long time because it's very, very easy to plant. It's got a very beautiful leaf structure. It's more of a bold leaf, kind of like a rounder leaf. And it just, I think it looks great. It comes in a lot of different varieties. It's the most popular aquarium plant. So if you walk into a PetSmart, a Petco, your local fish store, guaranteed they will have probably at least a number of different varieties of Anubias. Just make sure you look at the package and it will tell you what size it's going to be. They're not all the same. You could have an Anubius Nana, which is much smaller, the tiniest Anubius Nana Petite, my absolute favorite aquarium plant. If you know me at all, you probably already know that. And then there's other ones that grow, the, the varieties grow very, very tall. We have some, and the great thing about Anubius is it grows immersed or submersed. We'll get to that later but it's just a great looking plant and it's actually very opposite of the cryptocorn which has a completely different leaf structure it's more of a thin elongated leaf and what i would consider more of a symmetrical sort of looking plant and as it grows and matures it gets fuller and rounder and it can take a, a, a very large amount of space in your tank which if you have a small tank that may be an unwelcome surprise as it grows. And then it, it can also, when it grows, it can throw out runners throughout your tank. And that can also be a surprise in a very small tank, which you will have to do some maintenance and probably pull them out. But it's a great looking plant. And one of the biggest pluses for this plant is it comes in different colors. So maybe you've had uh, aquariums before and you've used fake plants, which in a number of our tanks behind us in, in several tanks, we do actually have fake plants because some fish like to eat the plants. So we need to use the fake plants. And that can be really nice because they come in different colors, purples and reds. Well, the Crypt does come in different colors. The Cryptocorn Wenti comes in green, obviously, and then bronze and red. Absolutely a great looking plant if you're looking to add some color into your tank. Now the next category that I thought we could break down would be for planting and care. They're actually quite opposite. The Anubias, when you plant it, you don't actually plant it in the substrate. The rhizome actually has to stay outside of the substrate. That means you can glue it. You actually use super glue gel, that's your best bet. You can glue it to whatever hardscape you have, be it a rock, driftwood, etc. And as it grows, the roots will actually attach itself to whatever you have, you know, attached it to with either glue, you can use string, wire, fish line, whatever, or you can even, what I like to do sometimes is if you have multiple little hardscaping, you can kind of wedge it in uh, the, the rhizome or the roots, you can kind of wedge it in between a couple things to just hold it down there until it attaches itself. And that I don't think you can get really any easier. Now the super greatest thing about Anubias is, in my opinion, is that it can grow not only submersed, which means it's completely underwater, like you would assume for an aquatic plant, it can also grow 
immersed, which is great for water gardens, paludariums. And what that means is it grows out of water. So as long as the rhizome is underwater, the leaves will actually grow up out of the water and looks amazing, especially in the tank. Behind me here, we have a number of, well, we have both. We have a lot of different crypts, which have really naturalized quite nicely in there. And we have a lot of anubias that are growing outside of the water, which I think looks absolutely great. It's kind of more of like a, a pond look. Now the crypt is opposite. It is a planted plant. You plant it, the roots under the substrate, which even to this day, I find challenging to sometimes frustrating. Sometimes it's a two-handed ordeal. You need to hold the plant with one, one hand and then either cover it with the substrate with your other hand or uh, kind of hold it down. It, it can, for me, it's, it's challenging. But I do believe that it's worth it because it is such a beautiful plant. Like I said, it can really get big and bushy and very tall. It grows faster than the Anubias. You might want to keep that in mind. And it can take up a lot of space in a tank. So just one plant after some time will quite possibly take up a significant amount of room in your tank after some time because it will get larger and bushier and it sends out runners which create baby plants all around, which is an added bonus because one plant equals many other plants in the future. Yay! One thing to keep in mind, which I consider a con, but as long as you know it's coming, you don't need to panic. You're gonna know it's coming and it'll be all okay. The crypt, once you plant it, it frequently will melt. It means uh, a number of their leaves will start to, well, it looks like it's melting. It starts dissolving. It looks kind of slimy and you have to pull them out. That's okay. The plant is just getting accustomed to its new surroundings. As long as you have it fertilized, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment, it will be fine. The leaves will come back. So just make sure you just remove the, the spent little leaves and it will, it will acclimate, throw out fresh leaves at some point and you will be just fine. These two plants are different for fertilizing. The Anubias takes its nutrients from the water column because it is not planted in the substrate. So you wanna use a liquid fertilizer, just a little squirt here and there. There's always instructions on the bottle. And then the Crypt, you need to actually use a root tab into the substrate. So you will be planting the plant and then you will need to plant the root tabs under the, the substrate. The third category is propagation. One of the greatest things about aquatic plants is propagation. They'll propagate all by themselves. It's a great thing. You buy one plant, pretty soon you're gonna get more than one. What a great deal. Anubias, when it grows, it actually sends out leaves from the rhizome. So it gets kind of longer and taller and the leaves sprout up. To propagate this plant is very simple. It, it has like little nodes along the rhizome. And then all you need to do is cut with a knife or just break it apart very gently and you will have more than one plant. You just want to make sure that there are little roots on each little section that you have divided and you will be good to go. You can re-glue them, attach them throughout your tank and yay, then you're going to have a bunch of new little Anubias. Crypts are opposite. The new leaves grow from the base of the plant so as the plant matures it gets bushier from the center of the plant and at some point you can go ahead and divide kind of similar to a hosta actually crypts remind me of a hosta i don't know why and you will get more a very large crypt is actually now made of smaller crypts that you can kind of very gently pull apart and replant elsewhere but keep in mind it also sends runners under the substrate which create more and then you can if you want to move them to a different tank what have you you can pull them apart underneath the substrate and pull out your new baby crypts. So I hope you found this video helpful, kind of breaking apart the different uh, pros and cons of each plant. Like I said, they're both really great. They're wonderful plants. I highly recommend trying aquatic plants. You can just walk into any kind of fish store, a PetSmart, a Petco, they come in little tubes. You can take them home, practice with them. They're just a lot of fun and you don't have to worry about forgetting to water them. That's a great thing about aquatic plants. And if you have them in your tanks, your fish will love them. So I hope you enjoy the video. I will see you in the next one. Have a good week.